Life is always in flow. Wherever we go, we are accompanied by changes, not only without, but within. Our bodies are host to an incessant process of decay and renewal, powered by very special cells, a secret this man is keen to unravel. Ik ben Hans Klevers. Mijn laboratorium is al 25 jaar geïnteresseerd in stamcellen, in gezondheid en in ziekte. De laatste jaren zien we eindelijk dat onze inzichten patiënten kunnen gaan helpen. My name is Hans Klevers. My lab has been interested in stem cells for 25 years in health and in disease. We are now finally starting to see that our insights will benefit patients. At the Hubrecht Institute in Utrecht, Hans Klevers and his team are beginning to realize the enormous potential of stem cells for scientific and medical applications. The researchers exploit the stem cell's power to create new tissues through cell division. These tissues later differentiate into organs. Here, stem cells taken from the liver are in the process of forming a new organ. A small tissue sample is the raw material for the extraction of stem cells. To isolate and propagate them in order to form new organ tissues is the goal of this research. The unlimited reproduction of organ stem cells is the great achievement of Hans Kleber's team. They came up with a technique that is now used by scientists all around the world. After isolating the stem cells from the sample, they are treated to differentiate into new liver tissue. Inside the incubator, they develop into so-called organoids. Organoids are really small versions of our organs. We make them by taking stem cells from individual organs, we grow them, we can grow them forever. They get bigger and bigger, but they always look like the original organ. So we can use them for research, always interesting for us, but in the long run, you could actually use them to repair damaged organs, say a liver that no longer works. You might give cultured liver cells in the form of organoids back to a patient. Um, that's long run. In the short run, we think that we can apply it for diagnostics for individual patients. We call that personalized medicine, for instance, to match the best drug with an individual patient, so that you give, even if a drug is very expensive, you know for this patient it works, it's worthwhile to spend that money. Hans Klevers aims to build on his fundamental research and, working closely with doctors, hopes to create practical applications that will help patients. Pediatrician Bert Aretz collaborates with Klevers to turn stem cell research into therapy. The Wilhelmina Pediatric Clinic is only a stone's throw away from Klever's lab. Seven-year-old Alison could benefit from the discoveries made there. She suffers from mucoviscidosis, a genetic disorder that can cause mucus obstruction of the lungs. To alleviate the symptoms, Alison needs drugs that take the idiosyncrasies of her individual body into account. The success rate of these often very expensive drugs can now be tested outside the patient's body, thus eliminating side effects and gaining valuable time. Various medications can be applied to the organoids simultaneously in the lab, and the results show which drug works best for this individual patient in the fight against mucoviscidosis or even cancer, a milestone for enhancing the effectiveness of medicine based upon Klever's work. Can you show me the biggest organoids? The second step would be to use organoids not just in the lab, but to grow them in the lab, give them back to patients. That is a more complex level, because now you have to show that they are actually safe. I mean, the worry would be that somewhere in those organoids, maybe only one cell has become malignant. And if you give that expanded set of cells back to a patient, you might cause cancer. That's the biggest worry. Um, so we have to show in many, many ways that it's safe what we want to do. 
treating patient stem cells in such a way that they can be reintroduced into the body as healthy organoids may soon become reality. The researchers are currently testing a novel technique which involves overhauling the organoids with a sort of repair DNA. This way, errors in the stem cell's genome can be eliminated. The method, called CRISPR-Cas9, works like a pair of scissors. It cuts out the flawed DNA section. This part is then replaced by an error-free gene sequence. In the lab, Hans Klever's team have thus successfully eliminated genetic defects in intestinal cells of mucoviscidosis patients. The next task is to reintroduce these cells into the patient's body. So the big challenge for now is the change that we are undergoing. We have been a lab that was great in making discoveries. Now we have to become a lab that is actually putting these discoveries into practice. We have to start dealing with regulatory authorities. We have to make things better, safer. It is a very different practice from what we were used to. To enable the transition from the lab to the medical world, the researchers have to ensure that the genetically engineered organoids will be accepted by the patient's bodies and that there is no chance for cancerous growths. Plus, the organoid cells must indeed assist the functioning of the original organ. In mice, the transfer of liver organoids has already proved successful, and the cells really did take over functions of the liver. Should this also become possible in human beings, it would open up unheard of prospects in the field of medicine. Prima. High five, no gear. Good so. My big dream would be that one day there will be large biobanks that consist of organoids from different tissues, from different volunteer donors that are still alive, but that can be used instead of organ transplants to cure people with damaged or lost organs. A dream that all of us would benefit from, should one of our organs give out. Building bridges between pure research and applied medicine. Hans Klebers.